when the only constant in life is change, you need to be ready. This is the Man Made Survival Show. Hello everybody, my name is Jose Prado, Man Made Survival, and thank you so much for coming to the channel and watching this video, because this information is very, very important. And if it feels like it gets more bizarre each weekend, and I don't know if they just wait for the weekend to release some bizarre information or, or that's just how it's turning out to be because it seems to be the pattern for the past three or four weekends. But anyways, we, um, the good thing is that you're here and you're going to get this information, especially because, you know, it, it pertains to survival and things you can do to to watch out. Uh, you know, we're trying to inf inform people, give them the up to date information and the things that they can do to be out of the way of harm. And the things they can do to prepare so they 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 don't see themselves in a desperate situation, as a lot of people are seeing themselves right now. There's some people who are getting overwhelmed by everything that's going on. They're seeing other people panicking, so they're starting to panic themselves. So I want to encourage you to just calm down, take a step back, and it's the reason why I released that video two days ago. The reason I use that scene from Science is because. To me, at least, or the things that I've seen is that that's how people are reacting lately. Because, um, for example, in the, in the scene of the movie that I showed in that video, um, they, they, you know, the tensions are high and they know that something bad is going on, but he doesn't know how to react. So, he, you know, he finally has a meltdown and he's there with his family, you know, they, everybody hugs and then you know, the alien invasion in the movie starts. And that's kind of how reality is has been for some people. You know, it suddenly just started. Even though that you could have seen it coming for two months now. Some people who have not paid attention and have deliberately been ignorant to it. Now that it's right in their town, right in their home, you know, in this country. Now they're be feeling overwhelmed and it's getting the best of them. So hopefully you took my advice, you know, you just took a step back, forgot forgot about everything, had a movie night with your family in your living room and, you know, calm down. And now that it's Monday, you come back to reality because things are going to be worse. I don't mean to be a, a downer or a bearer of, bad, of sad tidings, but reality does not care for our feelings. So let's get into this. The first thing I want to start with is Trump declaring the na uh, national emergency, and here's that. But it is only the beginning of what we're really doing, and now we're in a different phase. We had some very old and obsolete rules that we had to live with. It worked under certain circumstances, but not under mass circumstances. They were there for a long time. They were in place for a long time, and we're breaking them down now. And they're very usable for certain instances, but not for this. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. Two very big words. The action I am taking will open up access to up to $50 billion of very importantly, very important and a large amount of money for states and territories and localities in our shared fight against this disease. In furtherance of the order, I'm urging every state to set up emergency operation centers effective immediately. You're going to be I'm also asking every hospital in this country to activate its emergency preparedness plan so that they can meet the needs of Americans everywhere. The hospitals are very engaged. Uh, New York and the emergency orders I'm issuing today will also confer broad new authority to the Secretary of Health and Human Services. Big thing. The authority to waive rules to hinder hospitals' ability to bring additional physicians on board or obtain needed office space. They can do as they want. They can do what they have to do. They know what they have to do. Now they don't have any problem getting it done. The authority to waive rules that severely restrict where hospitals can care for patients within the hospital itself ensuring that the emergency capacity can be quickly established. As a result of that action today, we're announcing a new partnership with private sector to vastly increase and accelerate our capacity to test for the coronavirus. We want to make sure that those who need a test can get a test very safely, quickly, and conveniently. But we don't want people to take a test if, if we feel that they shouldn't be doing it. 
and we don't want everyone running out and taking only if you have certain symptoms. Our overriding goal is to stop the spread of the virus and to help all Americans who have been impacted by this. Again, we don't want everybody taking this test. It's totally unnecessary. Uh, and this will pass. Uh, this will pass through, and uh, we're going to be uh, even stronger for it. We've learned a lot. A uh, tremendous amount has been uh, learned. I want to thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, this is an example of another example of what I've been referring to uh, in my discussions with many of you in the audience as a proactive, leaning forward, aggressive, trying to stay ahead of the curve. And what you've seen now with this order is that we're going to be able to remove the constraints so that people at the state, the local level, the individual physician, all the way up through the federal government will have as many constraints as possible removed for them to do everything they possibly can so that we can uh, implement the things that we've been talking about, the containment, the mitigation, so that, as I've said many times, that curve that I refer to that goes up, we don't want to have that curve. We want to suppress it down to that small mound. And I think what we've done today is something that is going to be a very important element in having us be successful in doing that. We still have a long way to go. There will be many more cases. But we'll take care of that. And ultimately, as the President said, this will end. But what's going on here today is going to help it to end sooner than it would have. Thank you. Anywhere in the world, and one of them is Doug McMillan from Walmart. And I'd like to have Doug, if you would, say a few words, wherever you may be. Good, Doug, please. I'll just stay right over here. And Richard, if you could come up, please. Richard, please. Walgreens, thank you. Yep. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Brian Cornell, Target. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, please. And we'll be changing a lot of the rules, regulations for future, should this happen in the future, which we hope it never does. But it will, I guess, somewhere out there. There's some bad ones over the years. And uh, I guess that'll continue to an extent. But we hope it never happens. But we're going to be uh, changing a lot of the old uh, rules and specifications and regulations. Thomas Moriarty, CVS. We all know CVS. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Mr. President. All right, so you saw the video. And something I want to point out is, if you remember, a few years back, there was a whole conspiracy going around saying that Walmart was going to be part of FEMA and that if anything happened, that uh, FEMA was going to use Walmart to either incarcerate people or quarantine people or whatever. Well, that kind of proves that conspiracy because, you know, Trump came out and he introduced all those people and it turned out to be that it's Walmart, Target and all the other ones. Even though they're right now they're going to use part of the parking lot. If things get worse, then they'll use the entire parking lot and then the whole facility. And now Trump has the power to do so with the national emergency powers that he has. Like, you know, it's pretty much martial law. And since all of this has to do with something medical, it's medical martial law. So anyways, um, I wanted to point that out, you know, for those people who can say, ha ha, there's their moment. Uh, here's the next thing. Um, lockdown and entry bans imposed around the world to fight coronavirus. This is from Reuters.com. France and Spain join Italy in imposing lockdowns on tens of millions of people. Australia ordered self-isolation of arriving foreigners and other countries extended entry bans as the world sought to contain the spreading coronavirus. Panic buying in Australia, the United States and Britain saw leaders appealing for calm over the virus that has infected over 156,000 people. Well, the actual number for that now is 174,615. And it has killed more than 5,800 5, people which now the number is 6,705 people dead. And something I want to point out because of all the panic buying is that this could make the shortages that are anticipated for mid-April to mid-May uh, may be coming sooner because I have not seen any reports of people in Wuhan getting out of quarantine or they haven't gone back to work. You know, the production is back up. As far as I know, it still has not. And they have been in quarantine, if they still in fact are, for 60 days already. So this is the, the reason why I say that you're going to need food and water for, for 60 days or more. 
And I know there's some people, all throughout social media, there's some people who are saying that people who are hoarding, they're taking away from the people, from elderly people or, you know, the more people, the more poor people who cannot afford it. And I see how you can use that and which is true. But if people will have the prepper mentality or there will be more self-sustaining, you know, if, if they had already had their stores in place right now for such a time as this, then they would not have to worry about the, um, the shortages because they already have the things they need at home. I mean, I know there could have been some people that, or some preppers that would have gone and, you know, get a few things, but it's not like so many people would get all the store empty all at once because they will already have those things to their home. And this crisis of shortages would not be happening. And the reason I say that it may become sooner than April or May is because since they're not going to work and they're not shipping anything and the manufacturer is not gone, then there's not be no products coming out of China. And we rely heavily on China. As I've stated before, I think somewhere between 80 and 90% of everything that we have in the United States come exactly from China. So if they're not working, we're not eating. You know, if they're not working, we're not consuming. So that's what I'm pointing out. And for Christians, if you have any elderly people around you, this is the best time for you to go, not only share the gospel, but be able to help them out. If you have any elderly people in your neighborhood that you know has no family or you know whatever the case may be you can get a grocery list for them and you can go pick it up for them and bring it back so they're not at risk of getting pushed around or getting sick or whatever the case may be so if you are able to do that do that now all right and i know there's people who feel like people shouldn't be hoarding or whatever but let's just say let's just start having the prepper mentality because if you had those things in place beforehand, you and your family would not be going out there risking yourselves. As we have seen two people getting wine bottles, breaking them and stabbing each other with it. So that's something to think about and I encourage you to do so. And things here in the United States. So hold on. So France and, and Spain are doing those things, right? They're locking down millions of people. But that's something that's coming to the United States as well. Because they're trying to um keep the the virus from spreading you know so widely and let me remind you if they were not doing the things that they're doing now or you know they're going to start doing here in the near future the infections the death rate would be a, a lot higher than what it would be if they were not doing anything at all if the whole line of it's just the flu was continuing and the governments were pretty much not doing anything at all then this would be a national crisis even worse than whatever it would it would be a national crisis worse than what it already is right now. So keep that in mind because of the next headline. Dr. Anthony Fauci urges national shutdown as coronavirus spreads. This from WashingtonTimes.com. Dr. Anthony Fauci urge Americans to shut urge Americans to shut down more aggressively as the coronavirus spreads. On MSNBC's Meet the Press. Mr. Fauci endorsed a 14-day national shutdown to help slow down the virus. He explained that he has brought it up with the administration, which generally open, which is generally open to his ideas. I think Americans should be prepared for. I think Americans should be prepared that they are going to have to hunker down significantly more than we are as a country are doing right now. He said. The U.S. should prepare for this to last for several weeks to a few months. So they are saying 14 days to two months. You know, they are saying to two weeks. I mean, excuse me, eight weeks, which is about, you know, 60, 60 days. And let me remind you, Wuhan is being right now about 60 days where nobody gets out. And of course, the United States is not right now, at least, welding people into their home. But could they ever get to that? Possibly. And now they're taking further steps and people around the country are starting to think and talk differently than what they were doing just a week ago, just six, seven days ago, you know. And the reason I say that is because of this. Andrew Cuomo to President Trump mobilized the military to help fight coronavirus. This from the New York Times dot com. He went on to say. This this piece was his own personal opinion piece in the that the uh, 
New York Times published, and it says, "We believe the U.S. Uh, excuse me, we believe the use of active duty Army Corps personnel would not violate federal law because it's a national disaster." There it is. Doing so is still won't provide enough intensive care beds, but it is our best hope. You must anticipate that without immediate action, the imminent failure of hospital system is all but certain. According to one projection, as many as 214 million people in our country could be infected over the course of the epidemic. Of those, as many as 21 million people could require hospitalization. And there it is. It came out. It came out of the mouth of Andrew Cuomo, you know, and I don't know how you feel about him, but this is exactly what the government is thinking. And he came out and said himself, 214 million people could be infected, 21 million of which could need hospitalization. And of course, it would be the same scene as we saw in, in Wuhan in the earlier days where people were just lining up, dying in the hospital hallways because they couldn't be attended to. And it's something that we could see in the United States. So the government is taking it very serious, very, very serious. And as he said, using the army right now would not violate federal law because it's now a national emergency all throughout the nation. Uh, and you may think that it's just, you know, too bizarre, too crazy to think that way. But he or, or that the government would not impose such draconian measures. But you are mistaken if you're thinking that way. And if you're still in denial, please reconsider because you're going to find yourself in a desperate situation and you will not know what to do if something like that was to happen. Here's my last headline and it's going to have a video attached to it. And here it is. Lock him up. Coronavirus patient under 24-7 armed guard after refusing to self-isolate. This from the sun. And here's that video. We just have to do what it takes uh, to lessen the spread of this coronavirus. And I don't want to be the governor that waits two weeks too late uh, to take some of those steps. Uh, last, I want to say that we have had the first instance um, of an individual who has refused to self-isolate. Uh, and we have take, taken the steps um, to force um, a, a uh, isolation uh, that will be in their home. This is a Nelson County resident uh, that has tested positive, left against medical advice, uh, refused to self-quarantine. Uh, we have worked with the county judges and others. Uh, it's a step I hope that I never had to take, but we can't allow one person who we know has this virus to refuse uh, to protect their, their neighbors. There you have it. If you thought that the government would not use armed guards to keep people inside, then you're mistaken because I just showed you proof coming exactly out of their mouth telling you that people who violate the quarantine would be, you know, pretty much incarcerated or be forced into quarantine in their own home. The same thing we're seeing in Israel, same thing we're seeing in Italy. We're seeing the same uh measures around the world why because they have called it a, a global pandemic and when they call the global pandemic certain rules came into play and these are the rules in play now that you are seeing folding right before your eyes so if you're still in the now please please don't take this lightly if at all possible if you can take if you can get 60 to 90 days worth of food and water in your home do it because it looks like we're going that direction all right. So that's the things you can do right now is hunker down. Don't go anywhere, especially if you live in a, in a city where there has not been a lot of cases. You know, this is probably going to be easier for you. But places like New York, Atlanta, Seattle, uh, California, Texas, all the cities with a lot of population, you're going to see see the worst. People who live in rural areas, you may not see as bad. But you mess, you're still under the same rules because it's a national emergency. So be smart, all right? If you are able to stock up right now, do it. Especially now that the federal government is going to take over the distribution of goods throughout every store, such as Walmart and Target, all right? And my hunch is that they're going to take that 
take or they're going to distribute those uh, goods to areas with more population so they don't have food riots that's just a hunch and that's what i'm thinking so if you can right now you should go and get the food and water you need but also if you can help other people do so if you can't then you just can't all right doesn't matter what social media thinks at the end of the day you have to worry about you and your family and for the people who are in denial you need to take action right now before there's nothing on the shelves and you have nothing to eat but again my name is Jose Prada, Memo Survival. Please share this information because this information is very important and get ready for them to tell you that the entire country is in lockdown. But anyways, as we say here in Memo Survival, always ready. The Man Made Survival Show.